As a pilot, you are well aware that there are many critical actions you take during each stage of flight. Landing is no exception. And one segment of landing in particular calls for special focus. A landing is not over once the main gear touches down. Although derotation, the time between main gear touchdown and nose gear touchdown, is extremely short, a matter of seconds, your actions during these few seconds will help ensure a smooth, trouble-free landing. Over the past few years, incidents of hard nose gear impacts have been increasing. If the impact is excessive, significant structural damage may result. In most incidents, the main gear touchdown was relatively normal. Structural damage resulted from high nose-down pitch rates generated by the application of full or near full forward control column during derotation. This video will examine hard nose gear touchdowns, look at aircraft load design considerations and the effect a hard landing can have, and will increase your awareness of factors that lead to a hard nose gear touchdown and how to avoid them. Let's begin by examining a typical hard-nosed landing incident. As in most occurrences of this type, the flight proceeded without incident up until the actual landing. However, after the aircraft touched down on the main landing gear, it started to bounce. Although the landing did not seem excessively hard at the time, subsequent examination of the aircraft showed that it had sustained major structural damage. Several factors can contribute to hard nose gear contact. In most cases where damage is sustained, one or more of the following factors are present. Moderate to high crosswinds, the approach is not stabilized, speed brakes are not armed for landing, there is a bounce after initial main gear touchdown, and there is excessive nose down elevator input. Let's re-examine this type of incident with instrumentation visible. Again, the flight is uneventful until the landing. In this particular case, crosswinds are not a factor. The aircraft starts to bounce after main gear touchdown. At this point, a sharp forward column movement can be noted. This results in an excessive nose gear derotation rate, resulting in structural damage. In a typical landing, once the main wheels touch down, the landing derotation begins. You immediately begin flying the nose wheels smoothly onto the runway by controlling the aircraft pitch rate while relaxing aft column pressure. Control column movement forward of the neutral position should not be required. This graph illustrates the control column force in pounds for a series of normal landings and landings where airframe damage occurred. As you can see, damage results from excessive forward column input. Over the years, examination of flight test data from many landings with excessive nose gear derotation rates have resulted in enhanced design requirements that enable nose gear and fuselage structures to withstand harder nose gear contact. However, as this illustration shows, large forward column inputs can result in loads that exceed the design requirements. During a typical landing, the maximum nose gear load is well below the structural capability of the airframe. As forward pressure increases, maximum nose gear load also increases, eventually surpassing the structural capability of the airframe, reaching a point where possible damage may occur. Avoiding a hard landing that may lead to structural damage begins with a stabilized approach. The following parameters recommended by the Flight Safety Foundation define a stabilized approach should be met by 1,000 feet above touchdown in IMC conditions. The aircraft is on the correct flight path. Only small changes in heading and pitch are required to maintain the flight path. The aircraft's speed 
not more than VREF plus 20 knots indicated airspeed, and not less than VREF. Sink rate is no more than 1,000 feet per minute. The aircraft is in proper approach and landing configuration. Power setting is no lower than the minimum specified for the type of aircraft. And all briefings and checklists have been performed. All of these approach parameters must be met by 500 feet, including visual approaches. The speed brakes should be armed for landing, and the auto brakes set for the appropriate conditions. During heavy manual braking or heavy braking due to a high auto brake setting, increased back pressure may be required during derotation to reduce the derotation rate. At the start of the flare maneuver for your airplane, smoothly increase the pitch approximately two degrees to reduce the descent rate, and smoothly reduce thrust to achieve idle at touchdown. Ideally, the main gear touchdown should occur simultaneously with the thrust levers reaching idle. After main gear touchdown, assure that speed brakes have deployed and initiate reverse thrust. Smoothly fly the nose wheel onto the runway by relaxing aft column pressure. During crosswind landings, it's not necessary to apply full forward column in an effort to improve directional control. Use only light forward control column pressure. The rudder provides the required directional control until the airplane is at a relatively low speed and the rudder pedal nose wheel steering is used to complete the landing rollout. If you experience a bounce upon landing, Hold or re-establish a normal landing attitude and add thrust as necessary to control the rate of descent. If the bounce is shallow, what might be considered a skip, you do not need to add thrust. If a high hard bounce occurs, initiate a go-around. While following these techniques to avoid a hard nose gear touchdown, you must consciously avoid putting yourself into a situation that may result in a tail strike. To do this, do not allow airspeed to decrease below a minimum of VREF plus 5 until starting the landing flare maneuver. Do not use stabilizer trim prior to or during the landing flare. And do not hold the airplane off in an attempt to make an extremely smooth landing. In the past, after flight crews have reviewed material on hard nose gear touchdowns, these type of incidents have decreased. Incidents tend to increase as time passes between formal training sessions. Review this video and other material frequently. Avoid placing yourself in a hard nose gear touchdown situation.